Hi guys and welcome. In this video we're going to be taking a detailed look, a sprue review if you like, of Revel's 1 12th scale Suzuki RG500 MotoGP bike as ridden by Mr. Barry Sheen. Terrific. And as anybody who used to watch the old two-stroke 500 GPs back in the day will know, uh, number seven is every bit as famous in the UK, if not more so, than Valentino Rossi's number 46s. And uh, in fact, in the UK, this particular bike and this colour scheme and this particular number was probably more famous than this particular fella. And obviously displaying his winning number there, uh, number one. And this, of course, is Kenny Roberts on his Yamaha YZR500. Uh, this, of course, being the Tamiya kit. I'm quite surprised Tamiya never made a kit of Barishin Suzuki or that Matchbox never made a kit of uh, Kenny Roberts' Yamaha. Uh, because the two are a natural pairing. They are famed for their on-track and indeed off-track rivalry, as any watchers of the series will know way back when. So the two are a very natural pairing indeed, and I am somewhat surprised that the same manufacturer didn't make the two, but hey-ho. This particular kit I've discovered with a bit of digging around, because until recently I didn't even know that Revell did one. It turns out is a repop of the Matchbox kit, which surprised me because the mouldings, as you'll see in a moment, are actually very crisp and clean. This was repopped in, according to Scalemates 2004, um, from the original Matchbox kit, which is late 70s, I think, off the top of my head. So we're going to go ahead, open the box, take out the, uh, the sprues and contents and have a good detailed close up look at them all. One quick mention about the box before we look at the sprues, because these really are a bugbear of mine. The Revel boxes are, are just absolute rubbish. I mean, they're the, the thinnest cardboard um, with flip open ends and they squash, distort and get damaged so easily when they're being shipped. Um, not a fan of those at all. I, I much prefer a much sturdier um, top lid box like the Tamiya ones or what have you. They just seem to actually be stronger generally speaking. Uh, so a little gripe out of the way, we'll throw the box aside. And we have one large plastic bag with one, two, three sprues, a small plastic bag with the clear sprue parts, and one other small plastic bag with the tyres. And interestingly, we've got a slick rear and a treaded front, which um, which is quite unusual uh, when you look at modern bike kits. So we're going to pull these out of the packaging and, uh, and take a look at them. But just before we do that, <coughs> we're going to have a quick look down here at the all important instruction sheet. Um, we've got a bit of history on the front. In the late 70s, the Suzuki RG500 on which Barashim won the World Championships twice in succession was considered to be the fastest, most powerful, blah, 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 blah. Um, and a bit of history, your typical stuff. And open the page, you've got your general blah, your safety things, don't do this, do do this, etc. Um, <clears throat> make sure you've got a responsible adult with you. That's the majority of us modelers, pretty much stuffed, I think. And in here, uh, I don't know if this is supposed to be in the bag, but we've got a little bit of vinyl tubing, which is grey in colour, unusually. And obviously to replicate throttle cables, clutch cables and the like, brake cables and what have you. And... One of my favourite things about Revel kits, having grumbled about the box, you always get a sprue call out. And I love this because kits that do this are fantastic because when you buy a kit second hand and you don't know if the kit is complete, you can take out the sprues and compare them to the pictures here and quickly and easily see if anything is missing. The rest of the instructions are your typical um, A4 folding step by step numbered instructions. Um, a security text sheet and then the decal sheet with Barry Sheen's IDs and the little famous Donald Duck and the number seven and all the appropriate stripes and odds and sods. And then of course at the very back you've got the decal placement for the rider 
and then obviously inside this would normally be the completed kit but obviously that's the rider so inside will be the motorbike and the decal placements so that's the instructions very simple very straightforward we're now going to pop out the sprues and I'm going to scoot in close so we can have a really good up close sharp detailed look at these parts. So the first sprue we're going to look at is a silver sprue which has the wheels and engine um, braking components and we're going to have a quick look at the reverse side which is the side with the numbers on and this is the side where the worst of the detail is. So over on this side we have the uh, front wheel and the forks, we have the four cylinders up here, we have various braking and suspension and twist grip components, the engine sump I think this might, no I think this is the sump up here actually, uh, along with the back wheel and the drive chain and sprocket. Over on this side of the sprue we've got the brake discs and a that's probably a steering damper i'm guessing i'm not 100 sure just off the top of my head we have some components to make the paddock stand up here which look quite thin and fragile so that's going to be an interesting part and then various components to make up the engine and then for quite nicely detailed carburetors up here i'm going to flip this back over <coughs> and Taking a look at the detailed side, I'm getting focused in for you. We've got the drive chain, the sump, and the rear wheel up there. And ah, yeah, this is the top of the block I see now. This is where, because it's a square four, the design, for those who don't know. It's basically four cylinders, so it's, it's two and two directly behind it. Uh, so this will be the top of the block where the cylinders, which are these, these bits up here, mount. And then the front wheel and forks from this side, as you can see. Again, moving over here, we've got the brake components, showing the front detailed side, the the rear uh, torque, torque arm and um, caliper housing, and then engine components part there, showing the exposed clutch. And I think that's the uh, probably the fuel cap for the tank. The carburetors show nice detail on the open bell mouths and slides, and uh, various other engine components, and then the paddock stand components over here. So quite nice detail on those. The next sprue is a light grey colour and this contains the exhaust components and some parts of Barry, uh, the helmet, the hands and the rear swinging arm and such. So we'll have a look at the reverse side first of all. So we've got the bike frame and the helmet halves and then we've got the exhaust halves The hands, the radiator, which strangely is moulded in two halves. I'm not entirely sure why, but um, there you go. And likewise, the rear swing arm moulded in two halves. I don't know if it's done that way because something needs to be sandwiched between the two, but or whether it was just easier to, to get the moulded detail in that way. But to me, ones, for those who are familiar, you'll typically get the radiator moulded as one piece with the detail on both sides. I suppose it does do away with the problem of having eject pin marks which you quite often get on the rear of Tamiya bike radiators so that's maybe not such a bad thing some more sections of the paddock stand by the look of it there uh, various bits of the calipers some more exhaust components over here and we've got a bit of flash down here which you know it's not a huge amount when you consider the age of the the mold it's actually reasonably impressive. So we've got a little bit of flash over there, the other half of the frame, of course, and then part of the frame which holds the fairing assembly on, I believe. Flipping that over, and we can have a look at the detailed side. 
refocus there. So that's the swing arm and the radiator halves, as mentioned, and a coolant pipe and the calipers, parts of the paddock stand, and then moving up to this section, we've got, of course, parts of the two stroke exhaust with their expansion chambers. And um, moving down and across, we've got some more exhaust pipes, of course, four exhaust pipes because it's four cylinder motorbike, <clears throat> four separate exhaust pipes with uh, each one with a with a, a specifically designed and tuned expansion chamber, uh, which is where your two strokes get their power in a specific rev range. And then we've got the the bike frame halves, which is a tubular cradle frame. And this was very, very common in motorbike design for lightness, strength and rigidity before box section aluminium frames using the engine as a stressed member came along. The other, the two halves of the motorbike helmet and some more exhaust pipes up there. Quite nicely moulded and a tiny, tiny bit of flash on there, but not a huge amount by any means. The next one, oops, sorry, Totoro, just knocked Totoro over. Um, there'll be a video on him, which uh, I will be doing in a little while. And the next one is we've got uh, the primarily the body panels and Barry, the man himself. So we'll look at the underside, which shows obviously eject pin marks and you've got the Revel logo on this one, if that's visible. I don't know how visible that is. I'm trying to wiggle it about so you can see. Uh, obviously this is all going to be hidden. This is going to be the under cowling of the rear. The front right fairing half and the front left fairing half accordingly up there. Over here you've got the front left and front right of the front mudguard. Some more fairing pieces here. Barry's face, which is quite impressive, I'll show you in a second when we flip it over. Some bits of caps and what have you, and then various other bits of Barry, his arms up here, his legs and what have you. And the casting and moulding of the Barrysheen figure is actually pretty good. It's, I would say it's on a par with the Tamiya uh, Kenny Roberts leaning rider, to be honest. I'm, I'm really quite impressed with it. So flipping it over and looking at this, we have um, let's refocus on that. We've got the front left fairing and the front right fairing accordingly. Very nicely detailed, some subtle riveting at the top where the screen fits and nothing over the top, it's, it's quite nicely done. Some more fairing pieces and the mudguard of course. Various parts of the rider, Barry Sheen. And as you can see, if, you, if any of you have a um, Kenny Roberts or a Tamiya kit or just the leaning rider with, that you have separately, and you look at that and compare that with the Tamiya one, you'll see it's, it really is on a par quality wise with those, I think. I'm, I'm quite impressed with those. And the other side, of course, of the, the various parts that are going to be part of the petrol tank and such like this here. And then down here, of course, we've got Mr. Sheen's face, the man himself. And while it's not the best casting, of a, of a figure's face that I've ever seen in my life. I think that's actually pretty good and it's a reasonable resemblance. Bearing in mind, of course, this is going to be half hidden inside of a helmet and I think that's a pretty good likeness of Barry Sheen. I think that's very impressive considering that the Tamiya ones are, as far as I am aware, a, a fairly generic rider's face rather than specifically trying to look like Kenny Roberts. I certainly didn't see enough of a notable comparison to Kenny Roberts um, when I looked at the kit parts myself. So, I'm just going to <clears throat> tweak my aperture up there just to, to go over this again because that was blowing out a little bit on my screen. Uh, so we'll just pan across again and, and let you have another good look, obviously with these being white. 
it's um, it's easy for them to blow out with the reflection of the lighting I've got on my desk here so another good look at the parts there so you can see quite nicely detailed the final sprue as it were is the clear parts and I'm not going to unbag those just yet I like to leave these in as long as possible till the last possible moment to avoid getting scratches on them because it's so easy once you've opened the bag it's unbelievable and you can see hopefully there that the the screen is actually quite nice and thin the molding there um, usual problem with these with Airfix Matchbox older type kits the usual problem with transparencies is ridiculously thick transparencies that looks so ludicrously out of scale it's uh, it's laughable uh, but that's really nicely molded very nice and thin and with a little bit of a polish that should look excellent so very pleased with that and then the last thing if I can find it somewhere we have a pair of tires bear with me he says confidently Okay, somebody's done a runner with Barry's tyres. Where have they gone? There they are, they're on the floor, we found them. So yes, uh, this one I can open because, you know, rubber, vinyl, whatever. Can't really do much damage to them. So there we have two tyres. Oh, let's uh, focus on these for you. There we go. Uh, front tyre with tread, so it's like a wet, and then rear tire without, so it's like a slick, so it's like, I don't know, combination of a, a racing wet and a racing slick. Um, I was relatively young when I used to watch GP back in the days of Kenny Roberts and Barry Sheen, and I never really took a great deal of attention to things like the tire choices then. And I don't know if this was a commonly done thing or not, but this is obviously a mix and match, uh, presumably for the specific race that this kit references. Uh, I'm assuming this is what he must have used and the conditions must have been at least partially wet to use a wet on the front I'm guessing uh, if anybody knows any better then please do enlighten me leave a, a thing in the comments below here and uh, and do enlighten me please because I'd be interested to know so yes we've got a slick and a treaded tire and these are in fact sized and I do believe they have a maker's name on as well, or am I mistaken? Yes, they do, Michelin. So there you go, you even have the little Michelin logo on them, which is which is pretty cool, that's good. So uh, that is the Tamiya Barry Sheen RG500 Moto GP Square 4 two-stroke motorbike kit in 1 12th scale. So, uh, I hope you found this useful. Those of you who watched it, your GP fans or people who are maybe keeping an eye out for a kit like this yourself to do a bit of a GP sort of build or a, or a pairing with Kenny Roberts. So um, that's a thank you from, from Barry. There you go, the wave at you there. Cheers guys, terrific, yeah. And there's Barry giving you a grin. So thank you for watching. I hope you found this useful and we'll see you in the next video. I will be back onto the tank as soon as possible, incidentally. Thank you. Bye-bye.